Hey guys, I'm Nashpa. Welcome back to my channel. And today uh, I'm being joined by a very special guest. Her name is Amal from the page Words and Chai from Instagram. And she runs a bookstagram page which has reviews. And it's one of those pages that I'm very inclined to follow because they're very honest reviews. So Amal, welcome to my channel. And I'd like you to introduce yourself to the subscribers. Okay, well, thanks Nashpa. So I have a bookstagram page called Words and Chai. And that basically started because I wanted to talk about books. And my friends were kind of sick of hearing me talk about books so i thought okay i'll write reviews of people who are interested and might want to read them so it started i mean it's just a hobby that i do i just read whatever i want and i post reviews and that way i get i get connected to other people like nashwa so it's been great so i think that's very similar to how i started my booktube channel because i i was never into instagram and taking pictures but i saw people talking about books and i was like wait i want to do this it looks like fun and again it's very common that um i didn't have anyone to talk to about books because nobody read as much as I did. Um, so yeah, and I feel like Amal and I basically connected because um, there was a Pakistani book that we both read. So we were admonished and reprimanded by an author for giving us our honest reviews in different ways. With me, it was a slightly more aggressive approach. Um, I think Amal was just blocked. So I feel like we interacted with an author for our honest review. And that's what we kind of wanted to talk about, about Pakistani books, specifically because I've been focusing so much on Pakistani books in the past year. And over the last week, I have um, put down two books because I was like, I'm not interested in reading these anymore for different reasons. So we kind of wanted to talk about the good and the bad and like generally the author's attitude towards their writing and towards the readers especially. So starting from the good ones, Amal, what are some of like the best Pakistani books that you've read? Like not even in this year, but in your entirety of your reading life, like what are some of the ones that you would absolutely recommend? So, I mean, my favorite Pakistani book is Meatless Days by Sarah Suleri and also her book, Boys Will Be Boys. So I don't really remember much about these two books because I read them years ago, but I remember I was engaged. There was a story happening. I think Meatless Days is more of a memoir, I think. But regardless, I love both, both those books. Um, and I think I would recommend those to everyone. On top of my head, those are the two ones that I actually really liked. Yeah, it's funny that you say because I've heard so many negative things about Meatless Days. Okay, I talked to multiple people and it's one of those books that I read on Goodreads and the rating is really low and everyone's like, it's very like pretentious and it's not, so I'm really like, that sort of gets me excited because I kind of want to know if you can go, if you remember a little bit about like why you liked it because I feel like the writing style read as pretentious for some people. I haven't read it myself, but like, what do you remember liking about it? I mean, I remember that I was engaged throughout. There was a story happening. She made certain references to I think so I think in Mithya's day she talks about her father a lot growing up in Lahore and then how she moves to I think America I believe and just her like journey her her dad was a slightly political figure and so she talks about him so I think people have might have found it pretentious just because her life might not be relatable to a lot of like Pakistanis like us like we want kids of diplomats or any of that so I think maybe that's why people found it pretentious. I mean, I also read it when I was in my undergrad and I was a major, major, so maybe that pretentiousness had kind of seeped in into me. So I feel like I should read it again and see how I feel about it now. But yeah. Yeah. No, I'm glad you shared your experience about that because I've been like reading people's reviews and I wasn't going near it, but I'm glad that there is someone who likes it. So I'd be like, okay, one person likes it and I will try to read it from that perspective. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to read Pakistani books the entire year, since August actually, making an active effort and it's been a very rocky process. There are a few, the ones which are like, okay, I would rather recommend this and not this, but the most of them have been like a pretty, it hasn't been great. But one of the recent ones that I read that I really liked was The Curse of Mohenjo Daro by Maha Khan Phillips. And it's basically a historical city in the southern part of Pakistan and there's like a lot of mystery around it because nobody really knows how old the civilization is and how old um, the whole Indus Valley civilization and how the city was basically destroyed. So there's a lot of like it's shrouded in mystery and this author basically set the book there and she made it, a, it was a mixture of a thriller and a science fiction and a historical fiction and I really liked all of those elements of it but this is a book that I liked because it didn't read like a first draft. And that's unfortunate that most Pakistani books that I've read recently, they just read like they haven't been edited. On that note, we've read a few bad ones. And we're currently in the process of reading one. I've already DNF'd it, like I've put it down permanently. I think Amal is brave enough to be like 150 pages into it. And this book is called In the Company of Strangers by Awais Khan. So what are some of the issues that you're having with it? And then we can like see which the problematic areas are. 
Okay. I mean, well, first I wanted to say that I actually haven't read any Pakistani fiction in a while because I just given up on Pakistani fiction in general after reading all the bad ones. But there were a few books that had such great reviews that I was tempted to see what the fuss is about or the hype is about. One of them was this one in the Company of Strangers. And 150 pages in, I don't know why I'm reading it. It's <laughs> caused so many problems. First of all, objectification of women. I mean, they're being compared to pallid vegetables. And then there's one, and it's extremely ageist. I mean, I can read out paragraphs if you want because I highlighted stuff. But <laughs> I mean, very problematic stuff in that sense. There's no, so this, it's ageist. It's um, extremely sexist as well. It's also reeks of elitism. I mean, I get it. You're trying to sh- portray elite the whore society but that doesn't mean you have to constantly berate things that like for instance public hospital public hospitals and like public rooms and stuff like that talking to servants in a demeaning manner i mean all of that stuff happens in our society we do know that but i'm just sick of reading about the same thing and also 150 pages in i don't really know what the plot is about or what's happening I think a bunch of, it was a lot of brand naming that was being dropped for no reason um, so I wanted to read one part where he's talking, I think, about a 40-year-old. So not that old, right? I mean, I'm almost 30, so just 10 years into me is ugly stretch marks lined the folds of loose fat around her midriff. And even in the dull glow of the lamps, he saw the cellulite on her legs. Her entire body sagged. Perhaps once it had been voluptuous, everything a bit firmer, God a bit kinder. But now she reminded him of a wilted peach as if someone had sucked all the juice from her body, leaving only dead flesh behind. That's really extreme for a description of a woman. Yeah. Um, also, he seems to be obsessed with the word voluptuous. There was a description of generous bosoms dancing around as well. That's, I mean, that's not how we talk about our bodies. So you can tell it's written by a man. Yeah, I think that's one of my problems with this book. You can just tell that it's written by a man. It's so clear that it's written by a man because... In the beginning of the book, he's name dropping all these brand names. She's drinking Brazilian coffee, Belgian chocolate. She has, I don't know how to say the name of this product. I'm going to try and it's called Touche Eclat. I don't know what it is. I'm not really into makeup. So like, I wouldn't know. And he yeah. said she used that thing to cover her tear tracks. And four people on my Insta stories, they're like, actually, that's not what it's for. It's a highlighter. It's not a concealer. And for that, you would need a highlighter. I didn't catch that because um, I'm not into makeup. So I wouldn't know. But it's so embarrassing for you to be an author to Google something and still get it wrong. And I think that's just really funny because it shows how sloppy it is. And I absolutely agree with you that it's so clear that this book is written by a man. A, because sure, he doesn't know about makeup. Nobody really does. Like, even I don't. Um, But just the way that um, women don't talk like that. And I had an active thought in my head while I was reading this. And I'm like, sir, have you ever talked to a girl? Or have you ever talked to a woman? Because then you would know that women don't talk about things the same way that men do in short there are exceptions but the way that he's describing women's bodies it's like sure palate vegetables but also extremely ageist things and there's a sentence there was a portion in this book where um two ladies are reminiscing over their past and they're talking about some cute guy that they had a crush on and one of the women is women is thinking that i the things that i would like to do to him something like that and post the screenshot here And it's like, we don't talk like this. I mean, I'm sure there are exceptions again. Maybe some women actively have this thing of objectifying men. Um, But in most interactions that I've had, and again, like you mentioned, you're almost 30 years old. I am 31. And like, that's not how we talk. That's not how we talk. Um, We don't talk about our bodies like that. We don't objectify men the same way that we do, that men objectify women. And it's important to note because like, we get like it's fiction and you're an author who's a man, but you need to put the work in and maybe talk to a few women and figure out how they talk um, because it reeks of problematic um, behavior. This guy is also obsessed with virginity because there are a multiple times in this book where the word um, virginity or precious virgins or um, virgins flush and things like that come to the surface. And it's like the author is not making enough of an effort to mask his own mentality and i feel like it shows in the writing because this is not what the characters are thinking this is what the author is thinking and like as a skilled author your thinking should not be on the surface it should be about your characters so yeah after 53 pages i was like i'm absolutely done with this book i don't have the brain or the energy for it and there are so many other books that i could be reading so i permanently put it down so do you think like you'll pick it back up at some point or are you like done with it 
you know, even apart from being ageist or sexist or there were other instances as well where so at one point he's just driving Lahore and he says the slums almost look picturesque. Um, so I'm just like, and then there's another part where he talks about these two women are reminiscing about their past again. And he talks about how she, when they were in undergrad or something, they went to do some field work in the slums of Lahore. And then how the, contrary to popular belief, the people in the slums are actually quite affable and they saw these two well-dressed women invited them in for chai. I mean, I'm just like, why are you, have you even been into underpoverished areas because I don't think you have like I've worked with these populations and this is just so rude to talk about stuff like this I'm just like aapke slums aur pictures lag rahe honge lekin aap rehte nahi hai wahan pe like exactly. I just found it very disrespectful and so I could not finish it I had someone on my Instagram who messaged me to say that she read it so I asked her to please tell me the ending because I don't want to finish it yeah. so now I know what happened I'm yeah. like okay great yeah but like the funny thing with books like this is like this has a rating of 4.2 something on Goodreads and a lot of people, someone, I picked it up because someone recommended it to me in my YouTube comments. And they're like, well, this one's different. This one is about the same things, like, you know, the same bomb blast and very cross things that we, that our books usually are. But this one's different. This one's better. And I'm like going into it with super high hopes. And it's like, oh, this is, this is actually worse than everything that I've read. It's one of the worst books that I've picked up this entire year because I'm like, I don't know the criteria. And again, it shows the author's behaviors because like, I had, like I looked it up on Goodreads and he's the one who gave it five stars and added multiple reviews of you know the blurbs that people give. And then I'm seeing all the other author friends because I've started to recognize Pakistani author names and they're jumping onto the bandwagon and giving books five stars. Like what do you think about authors reading their own work? A, I don't think that should be allowed. Also, I've never seen like non-Pakistani authors read their own books. Like I've never seen that happen. Um, so, and the one time I did see it happen was this book I read called A Big Friendship recently that's written by two women collectively. So one of them, one of the authors went and wrote a review, but first she gave a disclaimer that I'm the author. So I'm just going to talk about the process of writing a book with my best friend. That was actually interesting to read because she talked about the process of it, of writing it with a best friend. There was nothing about any blurbs appreciating her own book. Um, and I think authors should stay out of that because they've written a book, they've released it out into the public however the public engages with it it's you know they should not read their own books that leaves such a bad taste and i'm like why are you so desperate yeah no it's true because um i like we were talking about this one particular author who has given her own book um five star rating from two different accounts because the readers are not rating it highly right like and you have to get the rating up so and it's like it's so clear we know what you're doing and it's just like yeah it leaves a bad taste in your mouth because i feel like they need to understand especially authors of this generation which are releasing books now and they're fairly young and you know uh, they have to yet to make their way in the publishing world and here they are attacking readers for their honest reviews and honest review means an honest review like we don't get paid for i don't get paid for running a youtube channel you don't get paid for your instagram i feel like for us it's more about a process of putting our time in and we do it for the people your page is growing it has like thousands of you know followers and my youtube channel is growing slowly um but it has like a certain kind of following and certain people do trust my opinions so i feel like it's our job to be very very truthful because if people have started to trust us and again nobody's paying this this is something that we do for fun we do it on our own time despite everything that's happening um so yeah i feel like authors really really need to understand um that are, we're not doing this to be spiteful or mean. So in my run-in with my authors, um, like when I interacted with her, hers was like, oh, I'm sure you're a good person. And the thing is like, I'm sure you're a good person too. I'm not attacking you as a person. I'm just saying you're yeah. bad. And I feel like they can't differentiate between an author might be an amazing person, the most generous kind, but we are here judging the book. So what do you think about like this process of authors actively trying to influence the reader's decisions i think especially with pakistan so i think our reader base is also fairly small like everyone's also on instagram now right so the, so in some way everyone gets to interact with these authors and so i think they feel compelled oh he's such a nice person i should give him a good review but it's not helping anyone a because people might read your review and think they want to buy the book and waste their money and b i feel like genuinely if i'm an author and i write something i would want good criticism so i can improve my craft why do i want people just tooting my horn for no reason, right? Um, I feel like you shouldn't do that. So, well, yeah, well, like what you said, we don't pay, we're not paid for these reviews. Even if I would pay, even if I'm paid for a review, why would I write a fake review? It's not helping anyone. And authors kind of 
it's part and parcel of the package, right? You send your stuff out in the world, you have to interact with whatever feedback you do get. Um, so yeah, I, I don't understand why uh, like authors would like, if I write a bad review, you don't even have to comment on it, but don't block someone or don't like try to influence them. Don't try to use your friends or your literary circle. I feel like in Pakistan, if you have money and connections and a rich circle, you can kind of get the hype out, out with your book. But I mean, I also, anyway, you know, whenever celebrities pose with books, I don't trust them anyway, because I'm like, you don't even read your friend wrote it. So now you're posing with a book. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to buy it. Right. Like, I, in fact, I'm like, I'm not going to buy this book because you're posing with it. You don't read. Thanks. Bye. And one of the things that interestingly, this author said to me was, okay, you don't know how hard it is to write a book. So like, you know, it's kind of like saying that um, you don't have the experience to sort of critique this book. And again, with that, I disagree because you and I have are lifelong readers. I feel like this is something that I grew up reading and probably in all likelihood you did too. Yes. It's very unfair for authors to talk down to readers because they think we're not smart just because we haven't written a book. And maybe we haven't written a book yet. Maybe it's coming. Maybe it's come, coming yeah. and looking at all the flaws everyone else is doing and we're like, you guys leave it aside and let, let us do it. Let us tell you how it's done. I feel like it's not fair because of course we know what we're talking about. We have a very trained eye. And with lifelong reading, there are certain trends that I don't know how publishers are not seeing. And I read 50 pages in the book and I'm like misogynistic, sexist, ageist, clearly written by a man. How did the publisher not catch on to this? I don't understand. And I feel like every time I criticize a book like this, people tell me that, oh, maybe you were too harsh. And I'm like, these are the things you should have heard from your editor first. These things should not come from a review. All the things yeah. that I point out are basically things that the author should have heard and why is this the first time that I'm saying this the first time that you're hearing it um, so yeah I agree that um, it's definitely like it's not an encouraging attitude it antagonizes the entire reader community because then the readers are kind of nervous about leaving honest reviews because then again your fear of like getting attacked by the author being called out and then um, you know we can also make a negative review about your review and it's like then it starts but like it there needs to be a certain grace in accepting the criticism the valid criticism, sure, reviews are snarky. Mine are specifically very sarcastic because I like to add humor in it. And maybe to make a point, but I never attack an author's personality. And for them to like come back at you, it's a very, very poor attitude. And it re reflects badly on all of us because then we are scared that we don't want to tell you what's wrong with your book. But then yeah. if you're stubborn like me, then I'm like, my review is staying up. You can do what you want. <laughs> kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a very negative space that the authors have like sort of. And this is a few bad eggs maybe. Not everyone is like this, but this is our experience, right? Like we're talking from experience. The, the, the other thing is that I've seen, like you said, a lot of author friends, like there's this one particular book that I haven't read because I want to stay away from. Um, because I know the author, I don't want to get into that like thing of, you know, wanting to review it. But I have a couple of friends who have been talking, who have been praising that book. And that book sounds like every other Pakistani book with this journalist who's sleeping, flirting, and I don't know, watching her way through the city. And I'm just like, and then you know and then you have people who are praising this book who are also really good readers who talk about really good books on the instagram i don't understand that part either but i guess that's what it is is this book karashi you're killing me no this is typically tanya okay i oh that was another book that i put down 24 pages in and it was just how was it i've never gone near that book it was bad it was bad because um, it was the same thing over and over again where this again young journalist and cracking and that book like in 24 pages I was like this author is not funny because you need a certain skill to deliver humor and he, yeah. he and that's it. it's like a powerful tool if you can write funny that means you're a funny person um, at least in my book because humor delivering humor right is like a big big thing like you know you have to do it yeah. right you need a certain skill um, it was trying too hard that was my first impression and then um, I think it was on page eight or something. And this woman is talking about her personal life and she's talking about all, um, I don't know how to say this without like offending anyone, but like talking about certain vices that would, they would need in, you know, private situations. Let's just say it like that. And it's like, why is this on page eight? Why is this there? Why do we need this kind of provo provocative content? And again, I don't have a problem with reading pro provocative books. I think they're very interesting. They're very gritty if you can do it right. But if you're yeah. adding things to your book just to add a certain kind of a shock value, that Pakistan maybe things that happen in Pakistan, you know that we talk about this and it's like, 
yeah but like you don't need to put it to sell your book like you can have the book be about that but do it really well and i think this is the problem with most pakistani authors that they think writing about sex booze drinking is fun and it's you know it's quirky yeah. and it's and it's really not because you guys are not doing it well and you need to do it well for you to be considered a skilled skilled author you know um so yeah 24 pages in i was like i'm done i'm sorry i i don't have the brain or the time or the energy for this book um yeah so it was it wasn't great it was just not good the thing is that i feel like pakistani authors cater to the western audience a lot where they want to they're so desperate to show ke pakistan ke hum bhi pakistan mein we're so progressive or liberal and you know we drink and we do all these things which is fine but like i feel like every single book is either about like terrorists or about like in this okay yeah so i was just saying that like pakistani authors feel this need to talk about how pakistan is very different how we very progressive and liberal and so every book will either be about like terrorism or elite society drinking and partying their way through life there will be no concrete characters or like genuine descriptions and this is from the last two books that i've read pakistani ones and the ones that i've heard of right and i feel like this is similar to the problem we had with our dramas in tv where there all we talk about is like marital problems and household problems i mean there's so much stuff that you can write about write about when i read other books i mean there's stuff happening in pakistan there are independent people in college doing great things there's so much activism happening it just generally creates stories out of something else right i don't know why we have this need to keep talking about our elitist culture how look we drink too or we do all of this too so i feel like that just caters to a western audience and they get very fascinated how all pakistani books end up being the same in this desperate need to prove something to, to the west when we have so many good stories that we can also write about without catering to a western eye and one of the things that really bugs me is for example in the company of strangers i think dusre or teesre page pe there was a word that said kameez and then that was in like italics and i'm like who are you writing to because like that is a word like you know recent i've read so many books recently just this year that have been from lots of non white non american or british writers and they don't feel the need to italicize their words because they're just like okay you're reading my culture go look it up or you know or maybe they provide a glossary at the end yeah for make the effort right like make the effort yeah. yeah why are you italicizing something because oh it's not a word that the western people or the english speaking world knows i don't get it i absolutely no, hate I, when that happens it's one of those things which also like everybody in pakistan who's reading this book knows what a kameez is and it's one of those things that i got too because it's very early on kameez yeah. and and it's like we know what it is and again who are you writing to and again like with like if you're trying to make pakistan seem like this super cool super liberal super there are other ways of doing it right like putting these things on the surface of your society does not make it um it does not make it any more appealing because then we know how desperate you are like it makes it's a very desperate attempt to engage a western audience and of course like i'm sure even they are sick of reading about terrorism attacks and we're sick of reading them and again yeah. like i agree with you that there are so many people who should probably be writing books about their yeah. lives about their there's so many issues that go untouched because we are constantly fed this nonsense if i can call the west fan book it's nonsense to me like to me it's 53 pages and i'm not interested we don't yeah. need books like this in 2020 this was published last year this is a yeah. young author trying to make his way into the public publishing world and he is very successful because like you and i are just two people who didn't write this book like the 4.2 rating is coming from somewhere so he is yeah. successful but the problematic element of that is that everybody is reading that and everybody is thinking it's okay to talk about women a certain way compare them to vegetables yeah. compare them to talk about their virginity talk about all these things and it's like that's not we already have women's issues that are being ignored like we don't need another man <laughs> telling us yeah. that this is how you should talk about women because i feel like if people are reading that it's problematic and it's sort of like you know you go back into your feminist movement and you think okay, already we have so many problems we don't need another male voice discouraging you know yeah. discouraging um people and just talking about women in a certain way and i feel like that's my biggest issue with this book like and for someone who is so young and so aware in this generation i wouldn't expect something like this i just wouldn't yeah yeah i mean you know so when i was reading his book i was remembering the opposite book that i loved it's also a pakistani book but it's non fiction it's sana meher's book on kandil baloch yes. such a brilliant book even though it's non fiction the topic she touches on and then i just it, i'm just like on one hand we have sana meher writing brilliant stuff and then we have this guy writing about women this way yeah, like absolutely 
I agree. I love Sanam Hai. I read it when it first came out two years ago. And still like one of, and that was my earlier YouTube reviews when I didn't really know any, how, to, how this whole thing works. And I was like, I still want to talk about this. And I made like a 15 minute video. It's like, I want to talk about this. I don't know how, but like, let me try to explain who Kandid Baloch was because it's a very, very powerful book. Um, yeah. And he discusses it with so much objectivity and with so much grace in a way like she really walks you through how the media works how the media functions and how this woman despite what she did was basically a victim of the system and you know the kind of hatred that she faced and she talked about it really well and you're right that those are the books that we should be highlighting and you know but it's unfortunate that books like these are the ones that people are like oh you should read this and not many people know about that book which is right here like um so so it, it is like, yeah, you're right that we need to highlight better books. I mean, we can try, but then we're, we're only two people, right? Like we're only two yeah. people in the system of people who are um, kind of bent on praising books that, and I don't understand the process of why, like all the red flags, so to speak, are being ignored in those books. Um, very yeah. sorry. So, yeah, the question that we basically wanted to talk about was that are all Pakistani books the same? And so far, there have been very, very few exceptions in fiction. Um, that are writing about different things. I wrote like the Maha Khan Phillips book that I read. It was basically a thriller. Um, but essentially everything else is tied down to terrorism, elitist parties, booze, drinking. Um, with Eye on the Prize, I gave it one star because it was, it read like a very poorly written TV show. It was like a script which wasn't edited. Um, and again, it's basically like parties and booze and people like women bitching at each other and it's like that's not what we need because women actually don't talk like yeah. that and that one came from a woman so i was like oh okay yeah. like that you was know, this thing that, yeah this thing about women bitching against each other even in a race hans book 150 pages in all the women seem to hate each other they're all against each other they're all jealous of each other and i'm just wondering why do we need this in 2020 why are you writing about this yeah and you know, again, same thing, like, do you even know how women interact like, I don't think like, you know, I've never heard unless like there's some rare instance where a woman would actively go and attack another woman's looks or age. And I'm sure it happens, but like that are like, that's not what, how women are in this generation. I think women are growing up to be more aware of their surroundings and they know that they're already like being sidelined by the men. So why? And women have greater support for each other. Um, at least that's what I'm seeing, right? Like nobody's actively going around commenting on someone's hair, their weight, their looks, anything that it is. And it's problematic when male and female authors are both like, oh, that bitch. And it's like, are you sure women talk like that? Like, have you interacted with any young generation who is likely to pick up your book? Because most people like you and me would be offended at that. They'd be like, this yeah. is not how we talk. Um, and it's like, it's because they just have to sell it. Like women hating women is like an age old trope that they need to get over. Just like they need to get over the booze and the drinking and the party, partying. And yeah. It's just not fun to read about. So this is a conversation that I feel like it's an ongoing conversation and I had a lot of fun talking about these things because I love to rant, but I don't post many rants because um, I haven't recently had time. But Amal, thank you so much for coming on to this channel and I hope that we can continue doing this and you'll come here and then we can talk about something that we actually like rather than something that we didn't like. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.